Hi, it's Pastor Paul L. Anderson here at the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship, where we believe God's blessings never stop flowing. It's Worshipful Wednesday. Oh, it is the day of the middle of the week. I don't know about you, but it's the day that I always want to make sure I give God the glory, the honor, and the praise. You ought to throw up your hands in the air and tell the Lord you're so happy that he cares. He cares for all of us, and he teaches us to cast our cares upon him because he cares so much for us. Today, I want to take a moment of personal privilege to say happy. Happy birthday to my maternal Aunt Lucy. God bless you. You're the only survivor of the children of uh, Charlie and Hattie Kofa. Aunt Lucy, I love you. I always need to pause and just give a great moment of reflection and memory. Today would have been the birthday for my father, Leroy Anderson Sr. God is looking at us all, and I thank God for how he gives us people in our lives to lead us, to guide us, and direct us. I want to say, Dad, I thank you for the way that you walked before God and walked before us, and thank you so very much for teaching us the ways of the Lord. Today, I invite you to look with me into the gospel according to St. Mark, the 12th chapter, verses 18 through 27. It's a great moment for us to talk about the resurrection. Well, we find out in this little pericope, Jesus was approached by the Sadducees. These were the religious leaders that they believe that there's no resurrection from the dead. So they posed the question to Jesus. They said, teacher, Moses gave us a law that if a man dies, leave a wife without children, his brother should marry the widow. And if he has a child, he will carry his brother's name. Well, suppose this happens with seven brothers and the oldest one is married and he dies, leave without children. And the second is married to the widow. And it goes on and on and on and on in all these generations. So tell us whose wife will she be in the resurrection for all seven of the men that married her? Listen to what Jesus said. He says, your mistake is that you don't know the scriptures. You don't know the power of God. When the dead raise, they will neither marry nor be given in marriage. In this respect, they will be like angels in heaven. But now as to whether the dead will be raised, haven't you read about the writings of Moses and the story of the burning bush? Long after Abraham and Isaac and Jacob had died, God said to Moses, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. So he is the God of the living, not the dead. You have made a serious error. Oh, I love this because Jesus is talking to the Sadducees and he wants them to understand you're focusing on natural law, not spiritual law. You know, according to this text, it reminds us that God will remind us when we get to heaven, we'll all be as one. We'll be one spirit with God. And he tells us in this wonderful passage that is written in such a small portion, but it gives us great insight. He tells us that there is no marriage in the resurrection. That's amazing because I wonder when we get to heaven, will we see our grandparents as husband and wife? No, the text says that there will not be, quote unquote, the things that we see on earth in heaven. That lets us see that God is trying to take us to a higher level of consciousness. Too oftentimes we try to superimpose our thoughts, our feelings, our beliefs on what we believe heaven would be like, as opposed to reading the text. Jesus says something so powerful to the Sadducees. He says, your mistakes is that you don't know the scriptures and you don't know the power of God. It is important for us to know the scriptures. He tells us there will be neither marriage nor giving in marriage. In respect, they will all be like angels in heaven. He gives us clarity. You know, so oftentimes we talk about our, our grandparents being together, our parents being together as husband and wife. He lets us see in the resurrection, we'll all be as those who are the loved and created by God. You know, this begins to ruffle some of our feathers because many of us say, when I get to heaven, I want to see my mom and daddy. Yeah, you might see them, but you might not see them as mama and daddy. According to the text, you'll see them as who they are. That is, they're the beloved, they're the children of God. This is very radical. Jesus was always radical because he teaches us we must focus on the things that are eternal. Did you notice that the greatest point in time is not our time on earth, but is eternity? Too oftentimes we spend so much time trying to make sure we take care of the things on earth. But how about your plans for eternity? 
Have we made the first and the initial plan that is to receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior? Secondly, to surrender to his lordship. Thirdly, to allow the Holy Spirit to be the wonderful and dynamic force of God in our lives that we might tell others about how they can grow in relationship with God and one another. Jesus is very radical in this text. He tells us, don't worry about all that stuff, but be more concerned about your soul. Wouldn't it be great if all of us be concerned about our souls and where we will spend eternity by making sure everyone knows the scriptures and has a relationship with God? When we do that, we will focus on evangelism. We will focus on salvation. We will focus on preparing people for the longest period in time that is eternity. Today, I hope you're preparing for it. I hope you're planning for it. I hope that you have received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. If not, do it today. Simply say, Father, forgive me of my sins. Come into my life. Save me. Allow me to be the people and the person you want me to be that I might tell others about the salvation power that comes in Christ alone. My brothers and sisters, always know that you're exceedingly and abundantly blessed and God has a great blessing in store for you. Take the Lord with you everywhere you go and you'll always be in the right place. I look forward to sharing with you again on tomorrow. To sow a seed to the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship, visit our newly redesigned website, thefountainofraleigh.org, and select Sow a Seed from the homepage. Also, giving has been made easier with the new Fountain of Raleigh app, available now in the Apple App Store and Google Play Store. Download today, select Giving from the main menu, and then follow the directions to complete your giving through Subsplash. Thank you so very much for all of your gifts and donations that you've given to the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship. We thank you for what you've done in the past, what you're currently doing, and what you will do in the future. Your gifts and donations helps us to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, not only locally, but throughout the world. Thank you again for your gifts, and may God continue to richly bless you. It is here at the Fountain that we believe that we are exceedingly and abundantly blessed, and may you receive those blessings that God has in store for you. Okay.